as we carry the light of Christ in and sing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, number 349. to worship of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please join me in our call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Lord God, we come to you this day to worship you, to give you thanks and praise. We come to you this day with so much on our hearts and in our minds. But Lord, let us put those things aside and sit at your feet as we worship. Lord, you are God. And we gather humbly before you this day to praise your holy name. And it's in Jesus' name that we come in the spirit of truth to love you back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join in our opening hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, number 103 in your hymnal.
Our Old Testament lesson comes from Amos, chapter 8, beginning with the first verse through the 15th. Hear the word of God proclaimed. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings on that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you the trample on the needy, and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over, so that we might sell grain, and the Sabbath, so we may offer wheat for sale? We will make an ephah small, and the shekel great, and practice deceit and false balances. Buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling and sweep the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and everyone mourn who lives in it, and all of it raised like the Nile? and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn their feasts into mourning and all their songs into lamentations. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son, and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. Please join me in our responsive reading of Psalm 62, found on page 787 in your hymnal. <clears throat> is God. Test. 
Testament lesson is from Colossians chapter 1, beginning with the 15th verse through the 28th. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile himself to all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the whole promise by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings, for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what, was, what is lacking in Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Our gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 10, beginning with the 38th verse through the 42nd. As you are able, please rise for the reading of the gospel. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the feet, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her, then, to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need for only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Thanks be to God. Y'all might have to think back a little ways, or maybe just recently, but have you ever had guests come to your home? Think back, if it was pre-COVID, the answer might be yes. Have you ever had guests come to your home? Yes. Where they would want to stay a night or two, perhaps, Yes? Okay. So, that happened quite a bit um, when Brian's parents or my parents would come to visit us. At a time when I had five children under age eight, which is still a blur to me, that whole decade. And I remember wanting everything to be perfect for our parents, for my parents and for Brian's parents. I remember rushing around and making sure all of the laundry was done. And let me tell you, laundry was my life back then. Every single day, I was doing loads of laundry. And as the kids got older, I did horse laundry too. Imagine that. I'll get to the barn part in a minute. But getting ready for guests, always wanting everything to be just right and just perfect. The house cleaned, all the laundry done, all the grocery shopping ready, all the meals planned and partially repaired, prepared in advance if it would happen that way. Not that it ever did. But the fact remained that I was so frazzled by the time they got there and exhausted from getting everything ready and making sure all of the bedrooms were exactly right. I had to kick some kids out of their bedrooms to make them into guest rooms. It was a task and it took a lot of effort. And I asked the kids to at least throw the laundry down the steps so that I could do the laundry. It didn't happen. I'd walk in their room and it was all strewn about. I had to pick it all up. I had to bring it down and take it to the laundry to make sure that everything was perfect for my guests, our guests. So to the barn, our girls are horsewomen, and when they were a little bit older, the barn was their responsibility. And it was always cleaner than their room. Always, without fail, the barn was always cleaner. And that's okay, they love their horses, they love spending time out there. They did what they needed to do to make their horses comfortable. I couldn't quite help them to understand that they needed to do that for their grandparents too. And I really got on about it, I'm ashamed to say. It made me upset that they just didn't understand that their rooms needed to be as clean as the barn. One time when my parents visited and all of this rush and stuff happened ahead of time, and of course the barn was cleaner, the horse laundry, what I was talking about, did you know horses have laundry? Our kids, our kids rode English and they had these little racks that went around their legs called polos and there were four for each ride, for each horse, and that created its own laundry. And I asked them to do their horse laundry and they didn't. So I got to do horse laundry, you know, blankets for horses, fly thing coverings for horses and the polos made its own laundry. 
this really upset me because I didn't even ride horses. And I really wanted them to take care of it. Because, you know, they were good at cleaning the barn and the stalls and making sure that was done every single day. But the laundry they let me do. And I was a little upset. But this time, had it all done before my parents came, and I was anticipating them coming in the front door, seeing the beautiful home all nice and neat and smelling good, like good cooking in the kitchen. They got in the driveway, they got out of the car, and they went right to the barn. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? They didn't even come into the house. They went right to the barn. This was a lesson I learned. That grandchildren for grandparents are more important than a clean house. Huh, who knew? The relationship my parents were building with my children and Brian's parents were building with our children was the most important thing they came to our house for. They didn't come to see how clean we kept the house or what meals were prepared or if the sheets were clean on their beds that they were supposed to sleep in. No, they came to build relationship with their grandchildren. And what a beautiful lesson that a clean barn and a dirty bedroom taught me over time. It's like this in this lesson today where Martha is busy doing everything to receive the King of Kings into her house. Did you hear that? Jesus was coming to visit. And he had probably visited their home quite a bit, as scripture tells us. It wasn't far from Jerusalem. It was in Bethany. And maybe he needed to have a break, a place of solace, a place where he could just be Jesus. And so he would chose to go to Mary and Martha's home. And Martha this day was distracted by many tasks and doing the work herself. And then she did something. You heard who Paul says Jesus is, right? In the letter to the Colossians where he says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Wow. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. This is Jesus Paul is speaking about. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for Jesus. Did you catch that part? All things. That means all people. That means everything. What we see with our senses and what we don't see. All created through him and for him. And Martha is yelling at him. Did you hear that? She was so distracted and she went to her Lord and said, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Hmm. Ever done that church? Ever complained because you're serving the church? Ever do that? Ever wonder where the help is that said they'd show up and they didn't? Hmm. And then she says this. She's telling God, Jesus, second person of the Trinity, who's made in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, the visible and invisible. You get the point. She says to him, tell her then to help me. Huh. The nerve of her. Telling the Lord of Lord, King of King, Prince of Peace, what to do. You ever do that, church? Do you ever tell God what to do? Huh? Absolutely. We always tell God what to do. We got this list that we go through and say, God, do this, 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 and this. Granted, we call it praying. But did you ever stop doing that and then... Just sit at the feet of Jesus, waiting on the Lord, trusting in his goodness and in his mercy and his knowledge of everything that is you. And then 
listen for what he has to teach you. Be a disciple. Follow Jesus by learning from Jesus what Jesus would have us to know. When you were getting ready for worship today, did you have to have everything just right? Your clothes pressed, all clean and shiny, coming to church. Did you have to prepare to come to worship? Did you have to physically prepare clothing, nourishment, all of those things in order to come to worship? Yes? No? Did you do it? Yeah, absolutely. So when you woke up this morning, how did you prepare to come to worship? Was it a list of things you had to do for appearance's sake? Or did you, the first words out of your mouth, I'm going to tell you what mine are, but I'm going to ask you what yours are. What are the first things you say when you wake up? In your heart, in your mind. Anybody? Thank you. Pat, what did you say? Thank you for another day. Any other thoughts when you first wake up? Bathroom, maybe? Coffee. Oh, yeah, coffee. So when you're preparing to come to worship, do you prepare your heart to hear what God has for you to say? Do you prepare your idea of who you are before God, a sinner? Do you prepare your heart and mind to be humble before Almighty God and worship Almighty God with the saints surrounding the throne? This is who we worship. This God Almighty is who we worship. Are you preparing for that when you come to church? So I got another kid's story for you. Inevitably, with five kids, somebody would lose their Sunday shoes regularly. When we were preparing to get the kids all dressed and in the van and ready to go to church, the minivan, I called it a domestic goddess mobile. But really, it was just a minivan. And we'd be late to church. And you know when seven people walk into church late, People turn around and look. That happened. People turned around and looked and watched us all sneak into the pew. Loudly, I might say. And I was so frustrated by that. Didn't know how to fix that. Couldn't understand why this one child would inevitably lose one shoe. One church shoe. One dress shoe. However, I had a dear friend who said, this is what my mama did to fix that. We had to leave our church shoes in the car. <laughs> Period. Da -da -da. A revelation, a simple solution. So all five of our kids left their church shoes in the car after we left church that day. When they got out, the church shoes stayed in the, in the van. The next Sunday, no looking for church shoes. They walked out to the van barefoot and put on their church shoes, and they were all there. I love that. A simple solution to something that was so distracting and so frustrating, a simple thing. I could have just sent them all to church barefoot or with one shoe on and one shoe off. But this beautiful, simple solution helped me to understand I'm distracted and worried about many things and not the thing I should be Preparing for. Preparing to sit at the feet of Jesus. To hear the word of God proclaimed. To be present with the most holy God on purpose. With brothers and sisters in Christ. This message that Jesus is telling to Martha is beautiful. And it's a lesson for all of us. The beautiful thing, there's a couple of things going on in this passage, but one of them is that Mary dared to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn from him. She was a woman, and so in that day, relegated to the domestic chores of the household. But she dared to sit at the feet of Jesus, the great teacher. Granted, it was her home, so most likely she felt very comfortable doing so, but in the temple, that would have never happened. Only men were in the temple and women were relegated to another space. So it wouldn't have happened necessarily that Mary would have been identified as a disciple. 
Granted, there were many disciples, and we know. But in this instant, the fact that Jesus accepted her as he was teaching proved that Jesus' teaching is for all. Men, women, it doesn't matter. And so when he said to Martha, and get this, this is beautiful. I'm sure he didn't say, Martha, Martha! Wake you up, huh? No, I'm sure he said, Martha, and looked into her eyes lovingly and not only said her name once, but twice, saying, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need for only one thing. And Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Don't miss this beautiful lesson, church. The better part is always sitting at the feet of Jesus, no matter what else is going on in the world around us, no matter what is distracting us from worship, no matter our circumstances, we can always turn to Jesus. And every single day, we can turn to Jesus and say, what do you have for me today, God? Help me to accomplish your will, not mine, this day. And give me call. You see, we are creatures of habit, and we can make a habit of waking up and thanking God for another day. We can also make a habit of sitting at the feet of Jesus, opening the word, meditating on God's word, learning from the word of God, who is Jesus, and then listening for his voice. Everything on our to-do list will get accomplished. But if we spend time with Jesus first thing, whether it's the first thing you think about when you wake up, thanking God for this beautiful day, and go a little bit further, I challenge you to go a little bit further and ask God what God wants you to do with this gift of this day, every single day. Let sitting at the feet of Jesus be your habit, be your refreshment, your solace, your prayer. Church, we can do this. And if everybody did this very thing, oh, what a different world we would live in. Because Jesus knows every hair on your head. Jesus knows you by name and carries you in the palms of his hands. The ones that he stretched out on a cross to deliver you from slavery to sin and death and reconcile you to an almighty God. This Jesus is worth your time. And this Jesus loves you. Spend time sitting at his feet and loving him back. Hallelujah. Amen. As a response to the word, let us rise and sing, Oh Jesus, I have promised, number 396 in your hymnal.
as a response to the word. Let us proclaim, oops, as a response to the word, let us proclaim what we believe, saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in our prayer of confession on page 890 in the hymnal. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace and love. our time, our talent, our prayers, our service, and our witness. Thank you, God, for everything you gift us with each and every day. As we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to say, let us pray these words together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Please join in our closing hymn, Take my life and let it be number 399.
Receive this blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord by loving and serving your neighbor and by sitting at Jesus' feet. Hallelujah.